I find that as I use on one photo raw 2024 more and more uh, that my workflow has kind of changed a little bit the way i'm approaching photos and kind of what i'm doing things and, and in particular the order in which i'm doing things so this video is going to be basically what i consider kind of a five step approach to editing a photo and how i'm going about doing that so in other words this is my workflow or process now to be clear the tools slash filters things like that that's going to vary from photo to photo but this is really the process the outline of kind of how i'm approaching it and why so let's go ahead and get into it this is a photo from a fairly recent trip up to colorado which uh which was great uh it's, it was fall there's a lot of color this is a gorgeous sunset but this was after sunset but you can still see there's a little bit of pink here in the clouds that's kind of coming through that uh, you see right up in there so with this landscape what i want to do is um also, I want to show you something. If you look at the histogram in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to hit the J key, but with the J key, that's going to illustrate anything that's like blown out uh, that'll be covered in red or anything that's covered in blue would be basically essentially dark black. I'm holding the J key down, nothing's showing up. So, and you can tell that by the histogram, uh, the red would be anything that's running off the right hand edge, meaning it's too bright and anything covered in blue would be running off the left-hand edge of that histogram. But as you can see, the histogram it looks pretty good overall. I mean, it definitely errs to the right where uh, things are brighter, but uh, this is where I'm coming into step number one, which for me is the brand new tool, Brilliance AI. So um, I start here in develop, and by the way, if you've got obvious spots that you need to remove, do that at any time. Um, I tend to crop when I'm finished on the develop tab. So develop is first for me, but that's a, a two-step process. So the first step is Brilliance AI, where I click that, and you can see I've got a pretty decent uh, starting point. That's a thing I like to point out. Um, I think of Brilliance AI as a starting point. It is a, a shove, uh, a gentle push, uh, a nudge. Maybe that's a better word. Shove sounds a little harsh, but it's a, a move in the direction of an edit. I don't consider it a complete edit. There's not really any AI tool anywhere that I've used where I would do one click and say, hey, I'm done. That was great. That's exactly what I wanted. Maybe I'm particular, and in fact, I am particular, but uh, you may be like me. You want to control the edit. Brilliance AI is great at getting you started. It functions in that regard kind of like a preset does in my mind. Now, I've had some people say they haven't really loved all the colors that they've seen in Brilliance AI. Well, that's cool. I mean, you've got the ability here to, of course, dial this back. And I find myself dialing back the color a little bit, you know, 60, 70, something like that, maybe somewhere in that area, just to kind of tone it down a little bit. Now, while I'm in Brilliance AI, I always like to go into this local adjustment section and see what regions were picked up. And of course, um, the section up above that's impacting the entire photo but these local adjustments are complementary to it and it does pick up the sky automatically but it doesn't and it'll create the mask for it in a local adjustment um, but it does not automatically create the mask for the mountain and that's simply and i said this in a previous video that is simply because um, there are multiple things that could be qualifying as a mountain so by default it doesn't automatically do it uh, but super select ai does identify the mountain and that's the technology being used here. So you can just click it and click apply, and then you'll end up with two sections here, mountain and sky. And then what I do generally is I futz around with these two sliders just to kind of see what they uh, end up looking like. And in this case, I started pulling down mountain just a little bit, uh, you know, from I think it was at 25 to let's call it 13. So, you know, I've got a pretty good starting point. If you look at my before photo, and my after photo is definitely brighter. And in fact, I might pull it down a little bit on, um, already did on mountain. Uh, sky's fine. Uh, I'm not going to play with that. I've already pulled down mountain. I'll refine that here a little bit more. Uh, and if you need to, you, you can pull a tone down, that sort of thing. You know, I just recommend experimenting with these sliders, getting the photo looking kind of the way you want it to look. And then with Brilliance AI, I feel like I'm pretty much done. Now that's step one, using that new AI technology to identify those areas, create the local adjustments, add sections to local adjustments like I did with Mountain if you need to, and then saying, okay, that's cool. That's a pretty good starting point. I'm pretty happy with it. That's step number one. 
Now step number two for me is still on the same tab and that's going into tone and color. And to be clear, here's another question I've had. There's no masking in the develop tab at all. Uh, I should rephrase that. In tone and color, there's no masking. You have the ability to create these local masks in Brilliance AI, but for tone and color, there's not any uh, masking. So anything you do here, in other words, is gonna be a global adjustment applying across the entire photo. I will sometimes just come in here and play a little bit with the overall tones. Um, I like to leave the histogram there. That's usually the view that I have up here instead of like navigation or information, things like that. I typically prefer levels, um, histogram, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I would play around with these a little bit here. I might take the shadows down a tiny bit. And one thing I wanna do, and this is gonna be a shift to the ov overall uh, color look, and that is I'm gonna play a little bit with the temperature here. I'm gonna go a little bit bluer, so a little bit cooler overall, and that's mostly gonna be visible in the sky. This is a beautiful sunset. As I said, you can see there's a, still a little bit of that sunset color left, but it's mostly faded except for that pink. So there's a nice chunk of blue, and I like the blue. I wanna play up the blue because I wanna play up those cool colors against the warmer colors in the pink and in the kind of yellows here. And I may add, uh, sometimes I'll add vibrance here, but I think I'm gonna stick with what I got. So I feel like I'm pretty good overall with my starting point, and that's step one and step two. Step one, Brilliance AI. Step two, tone and color. So before and after. Now this is where I'll usually, because I've got better vis visibility, because I brighten the photo, I'll usually come in and do a crop here if I'm gonna do a crop, and in fact, I am, I'm gonna do a 16 by nine. So that's gonna look like that. And the truth is, there's just a, uh, some dead space in the sky. The, I love the shape of these clouds here, but up above that, it kind of gets dead and kind of boring. And so that crop is gonna get rid of some of that extra space, but it's also gonna pull this all a little bit more forward. Now, uh, this is another time when I might look at the image and say, oh, I need to erase this or that. It could be spots, it could be these telephone wires that you see here, or electric wires, whatever they are. Um, I'm not gonna do that in this video, but you do know, I'm sure, that you have those tools in on one and it's quite easy to do. I'm just gonna skip it, but bottom line is, I'll do Brilliance AI and Tone and Color on Develop. I'll do cropping, spot removal, things like that. So that's kind of my first two steps, Brilliance AI and Tone and Color, and then I'm ready to get in to step three. Now step three for me is going into local, and you will notice one of the differences that I think is a really good difference and beneficial for us in terms of workflow is that um, the effects tab used to be second. It used to be where local is in the previous version and local used to be at the end uh, where portrait is now. But for landscapes and cityscapes, in other words, the stuff that I shoot, I'm going from develop to local to effects. And that's kind of my workflow and that's what you're gonna see in this video. But I really like that local is second and has been moved there because um, I'm at the point of kind of refining the overall look of the photo. And the nice thing about local, and uh, by, uh, you know, sort of in, uh, in turn, the nice thing about Brilliance AI is that it's created these local adjustments with the masks, which is by definition a local adjustment, um, automatically, right? It did the sky one and created the mask for me. I had to go click on mountain, but it found it and it did a great job of masking it. And they're both there and they're both ready to go. And I'm gonna go in usually, and again, this is step three, I go to the local adjustment tab and I jump into each of these individual elements and just take a look at it and decide what I wanna do. I might wanna go a tiny bit darker in the sky. Maybe I wanna do a tiny bit cooler, just a little bit. I don't wanna overdo it. Maybe I wanna add a little bit of tint um, it was a little bit of pink in that sky, and I'm trying to bring that up a little bit. I might do a little bit of vibrance as well. Might even pull the midtones down just a little bit. Bottom line is, this is a refinement step. Step number three, local adjustments, by definition, are kind of uh, defined for certain areas because they're masked, and therefore, you're refining a specific area. In this case, I want to refine the sky a little bit, and then I'm also going to go into the mountain and refine that a little bit. I think I will take the shadows slightly down, and I think I'll take the midtones slightly up. These are pretty minor adjustments that I'm not even sure you can see. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of tint as well. And the reason why is because I added some tint to the sky. And I wanna make sure that as much as possible, I don't have a completely different color theme going on in one area of the photo versus the other. In other words, I wanna try to tie it together. And I'll work on that also here in a little bit. But uh, that's why I'm doing that. 
I don't think, uh, well, I may, maybe I'll add a little bit of vibrance. There's a 20 already. So maybe I'll go to 25. Um, bottom line is I feel like I've got the sky and the mountains looking pretty good with my local adjustments. And while I'm on this step three in local adjustments, I would also, if necessary, and this photo doesn't require it because it's really just two sections, sky and mountain, but lots of photos, you'll have other areas where you want to go do other things with local adjustments. Maybe you want to create uh, with the brush mask, one little area that needs to be brightened or darkened, right? Dodge and burn. Or maybe you want to accentuate something else in one area versus another. So this in this step is where I would go through and do further uh, masking jobs, if you want to call it that, to create these local adjustments to go customize the light and tone in any of those areas that you're masking. But that's step three, local adjustments. I'm done with that. And now I'm stepping over to step four, which is in effects. And there's really... Step four and step five both happen in effects. The first in uh, effects, step four, is what I call a local adjustment. So by definition, effects will, if you don't do any masking, apply across the entire photo. But I don't want that. I want to go in and I want to get dynamic contrast. So I'm going to use sky here. And you get this opportunity, which is so great, uh, with their super select AI to just automatically find that area sky, mask it, click a filter, and then it's going to open up dynamic contrast with a mask already applied in the sky. Just give it a second and it'll populate here. And then I can go in and make the adjustments that I see fit to kind of do what I want to do in this area. Okay, and there you go. You can see here my mask. If you click on that, you get this little properties window and you can always view the mask. There you go. My mask is pretty solid across the sky. It's got dynamic contrast in it. And all I want to do here is something I like to do with skies, which is create negative dynamic contrast. In other words, I'm smoothing it out a little bit, just softening up the sky, but that's a local adjustment uh, using this uh, effect of dynamic contrast. Now, I wanna do the same thing, but in reverse for the mountain. So in this case, I go grab mountain and I grab dynamic contrast, and then I'm gonna come in and do the same thing, but of course, in the opposite. It creates the mask, and there you go, dynamic contrast. And in this case, once again, I can show you the mask and the mask Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So whatever I do here is being painted or added to where it's white and it's being excluded from where it's black. So in other words, oops, I need to turn off the mask view. So in other words, I'm just doing the opposite. I'm now in the mountains. And in this case, I've got some positive dynamic contrast, just adding a little bit of texture to those mountains. I think that looks good. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to continue to do a couple of more refinements here using masks on certain effects filters. So once again, add filter. That's a plus. And then I'm going to click on mountain. And then I'm going to go into color adjustment. Okay, and in this case, I want to play a little bit with the colors. It was a fall image, of course. I want to amp up the colors a little bit because I like to do that, basically. Uh, I'm going to click on orange. This is basically HSL. But remember, I've masked it in, so it's only impacting the colors in the mountain and not the sky, because I want to leave that sky alone. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to take the uh, yeah, oranges, make them a little bit more red, a little bit more intense, maybe a little bit of saturation as well. Just kind of amping up that color. And in the yellow, I click on that. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Kind of get away from the green and get more towards kind of that richer, warmer color. Maybe give it a slight bump in saturation. And then for the greens, I'm going to come over here. I'm not going to play with the colors. I'm just going to impact the brightness or the luminosity of the green. And I'm going to make it darker. So that's just creating a little bit more color contrast. I basically increased the saturation and shifted the hues for the yellows and oranges, make them pop a little bit more. And then in the green, I left the saturation and hue alone, but in this case, I darkened it so that it could be uh, creating a little bit more color contrast. So if you look at the before this filter, there's the mountain, and then after, you can see it's a little bit warmer, a little bit more contrasty. Just It's a pretty minor thing, but it sort of appeals to my sensibilities. Uh, let's call it that. And uh, one more thing I'm doing here, which is add a filter, and this time I'm going to go to Sky, and I'm going to grab Color Balance. And this is going to be a color edit in the sky, of course. I'm going to start with Highlights, and I'm going to drag the amount to the right, and all I'm doing is taking this hue, which is all the way to the left, so more of the red hue, and I'm dragging uh, the, the amount, so this is how much of that color hue is going into the highlights in this photo, making it more red. So I'm playing up the color of the sunset. As I mentioned earlier, 
I would be doing. Now for the midtones, I'm going to drag it a little bit more uh, away from the red, slightly orange, and increase the amount a little bit. I don't want to do too much. I want to keep it real, but just adding a little bit to the midtones as well. And I'm going to leave the shadows alone. So if you look at the before color balance, there's the sky, a lot more blue overall. And the after, it's picking up more of that pink. I think that looks pretty nice. So that's what I consider step four, which is using effects, but applying mass to all of them. In other words, making effects local instead of global. And of course, that leads us to step five, which is still in the effects tab, but this is coming in and applying some effects that are going to apply across the entire image. In other words, a global application of these effects. So these are things that are going to cover every bit of the image because they're kind of like finishing touch kind of things. And that's what I typically do at the end of an edit. After I've done all my masking and customization, I wanna come in and maybe apply something, whatever it is, across the entire photo. And that's gonna be an effect, adding a filter, but without a mask. So I'm skipping all that over here. I'm gonna go straight to Tone Enhancer. And all I wanna do here is just apply a little bit more contrast adjustment and that sort of thing to impact the entire image. So maybe a little bit more contrast, maybe a tiny bit lower in highlights, maybe a tiny bit higher in shadows. And if you look at the before, there it is before, and the after, and I'm actually gonna make a couple of further refinements here. Uh, drop the exposure a little bit as well, but maybe not quite that much. Maybe just like a negative 0.1. These are pretty minor. I'm not even sure how well you can see it, but if you look at the before, there it is. You can kind of tell a little bit, and the after, there it is. A little bit higher contrast, you can kind of see the uh, the approach here and one more filter I'd like to apply globally and that in this case is going to be a vignette and the uh, tool has changed a little bit where opacity and styles and these controls have all been collapsed into these menus so if you're ever looking for something like big softy which is one I use a lot just click on the styles but in this case I'm going to actually go a subtle and just apply that gently across the photo but I want to refine it a little bit. So I'm going to go feathering to 100 simply because I like that. I like a little bit rounder vignette. Uh, and I think something like that looks pretty good. So if you look at the before vignette, there it is. And the after. So there you go. That's really my five-step editing workflow approach in On One Photo Raw 2024. Start with Brilliance AI where I go in and take advantage of the local masking, add new regions if I need to, move sliders around, season to taste, kind of get a good starting point. Then I jump, number two, into tone and color in the develop tab and just do further refinements across the entire image. So global adjustments, temperature, tint, light, whatever it might be, make those adjustments. Then number three, I go over to the local adjustment tab. I further refine any of those local adjustments that were created with Brilliance AI, add more if I need to, and kind of fix things, for lack of a better term, get them looking the way I want to look. Then for step four, I go into effects and I generally will go first in and add effects that I'm gonna mask into certain areas, generally using Super Select AI if it will grab whatever the thing is that I need grabbed, right? So if it'll automatically get the mask for me, you bet, I take advantage of that. And so that's, the, that's step number four. And then step number five is after I've done that with however many filters it is, I will stay in effects, but then go in and add some final kind of finishing touch kind of edits. It's often tone enhancer, vignette, things like that. And those are not masked. Those are applied globally or across the entire photo. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. It's basically about light and detail and color. Same thing I often talk about. And it's about kind of following the workflow um, or the workflow, I should say, kind of follows the way they set up on one Photo Raw 2024, which I'm a fan of. I think it makes a lot of sense. So if you look at my overall edit where I started, you can see there it is before and then there it is now with some final adjustments and refinements, local mass, all those kind of things. Hope this gives you some ideas about how you can use On One Photo Raw 2024 to have some powerful impact on your photos. And if you have questions, leave me a note down below. I'll be back soon with more vids. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.